One thing I really want to explain is how to use your materials properly. So I'm going to just create a, um, a folder somewhere. Let's where should put this, but down here and call it Z something. It's quite a busy project this because it's my sandbox for my testing. So I'm going to call this Z material just so it's easy to find. And I'm going to create three folders. One is going to be uh, material underscore masters to instances and a material functions. First thing you do is you create a material master. This is very common. You right click in the browser, you create a material, and that material is automatically a material master. So I'm just going to call that material master. This is going to have all of the, the basis of the parameters in your project, uh, in that material. All the other materials you use could be based on this one. So in Unreal, we refer quite a lot to the box within a box within a box, and this is the top of the box. So here we have a master material. You can change the material domain from surface to a light function. It does a completely different job. Well, we're going to leave it on surface for the. We can change it to be opaque, masked, translucent, additive, most useful. You see, if I change it from opaque to masked, some of these parameters will change. A lot more obvious if I change it to a additive. A lot of these are swapped out and it's turned off in my preview window. That's because some of these settings are not just not available in certain formats. So a translucent material doesn't need to have a metallic or a specular parameter pin available to it. So if I leave it on opaque, we have a uh, base color, metallic, specular, all the things that you would uh, expect in a uh, material. So if you brought in your 2D textures, you could bring these in here. I'm going to hold down three and click to create my vector three constant. So that enables me to create a color. I'm just going to click and drag the, the white pin to base color, which will bring all R, G, and B as one combined pin into our base color. And then I can choose my color here. OK, and that color is now applied to the material. I can apply the same thing to, mater to metallic and specular. I'm just going to press 1 and click to create a single constant. That's just going to create a value there that I can change to make it more or less specular. It's not doing a lot on metallics. It works better when you've got specular running as well. So I'm going to add a specular channel and should start to see the changes in its metallicness. Let's add another one. Let's add roughness. There we go. So if I make this rougher, it loses that metallic sheen. If we go down to zero, it's at its full metallic setting. So if I now bring this down, we've lost the metallic. It looks more plastic, and now it's going more towards the metallic end. And now if we change our specular settings, it will move the sharpness of the reflections. You can just sort of see them. Like there's a little point there. That's very, very sharp. And as we come out, it should get larger. Likewise. So that is how we would create a material. Now, if you wanted to create multiple materials of different colors like this, we would do a material instance. And for that, we would need to change all of these properties here to become parameters. So if you're building a parameter for the first time, like let's say emissive color, I could right click on it and do promote to parameter. And that's going to create for me an emissive color channel. That's now going into the emissive color setting. It looks exactly the same if I select a color in here, let's go for blue. It's now glowing blue, and obviously it's mixing that with pink. Uh, we may not like that. Just bring it down, bring it down to black. So it's just got a very slight blue glow to it now. Um, and that is now the default value, and it says there default value. It doesn't say default value on these because these aren't parameters. Parameters are only parameters when they can be exposed to other parts of the engine. So if we want to make this a parameter, we could either recreate it by right clicking and making it a parameter if we didn't have something selected. Or we can right-click on the node itself and say convert to parameter. And we want to give it a name, something that's useful. So we're going to call this base color. I'm British, so it's got a U in it, as it should. And then we're going to do the same thing with these. We're going to do metallic, specular, and we're going to do the roughness. These are all parameters that will be visible in a, uh, a child instance of this material. So I'm going to save this material. Now, this material itself may never get used in the scene directly. It lives here in the master materials, but it in itself is not um, going to be put in the scene. It would work. Let's just put a shape in here so we can see. Let's bring in a sphere, make it a bit larger, get the right. Uh, I've ended up moving the pivot. Oh, well, I'll just leave it there. No, I've set to the wrong thing. Everything's running slowly where it's screen recording at the same time. There we go. So I'm going to bring that material in. I can apply it to that ball, and that's the material applied to it. And it just appears in here as a material. That's not what I want in this situation. I'm going to reset this. The correct way to do it is to build the material master, and then we're going to create 
a material instance from it. So while we right click on it, we go to create material instance, and then we're going to rename this MI and pink. And while I'm at it, I'm going to create another one and I'm going to call it MI blue. Create material instance, MI blue. There we go. And you see that they are both pink in this instance. So let's just move these across into my material instances folder so it's nice and organized. Now, the pink one is fine because it's already pink. But let's double click on it and see what's going on. So here's our material. It looks exactly the same as the material master we built. It's pointing here to the parent material master. So that's how we know is um, the child of the parent master. Up here, we have got parameters. They're taking in the default settings. These are all the settings that we just left it at in the master material. So I don't need to change these to make it pink. But you can start to see where this is going. If we go back to the blue one, And if I click on the base color and the emissive color, I can make this color change. And now what is special about a material instance is that it is instant, not instanced. The changes you're making in this parameter will be apparent straight away, both in here and in your editor. So let's apply this material instance to our ball. And if I just make this window a bit smaller so it's easier to see what's going on, as I make changes to the color, you can see it live in the scene. And this is something that a master material can't do. Let's go back and demonstrate. Material master, let's apply that. The material master, I'd have to open up the entire shader graph, which could be very, very large, very complicated with lots of uh, little nested sections and things in it. And if I make a change here to my material, change its color, it is updating it, but then I have to save it. If I don't, it will just uh, revert back because it asks me, would you like to apply the changes? And if I don't want to do that, my changes are lost and it all goes very horribly wrong as it does struggle to figure out what it is we're doing. So we don't want to be doing our materials with the masters. We want to be using our material instances in the way that I've just shown you. So that is how we operate material instances. But we did make three folders, didn't we? What is this third folder? Material functions. So material function is effectively part of a material master that lives on its own terms. So well, let's just go back and create an, a blank one. So right click. Now we don't have a material uh, function setting up here. We have to come down here to material and create a material function. And we're going to call this MF underscore. And let's call this metallic because this is going to be a tool for operating the metallic features within that fixture. So let's just open that up. What we get in a function is the output result, something that's going to come out of it and feed into the material master that's sitting underneath it. In this instance, we've already built some of the stuff we want. So we could just you know, copy those over. So let's just open up our master material. If you want to have these settings in every single material that you build, they will always be available to you. So I can't put all three of these into um, one output because the output goes only into one node with just the metallic settings, I'm going to delete those two. We might create another parameter, one click, which creates another value. We're going to do a multiply just to demonstrate how this can work. I like this to be the right way around, so let's just move those there. This is going to become a parameter that's going to be a multiplier. But I would do this normally with an emissive channel, not a metallic channel, but this is just to demonstrate how this works. So that goes into the output result. It's a value multiplied by another value. Let's just give that a one as default so that it creates something and outputs it into this uh, output node. Save that material function. This material function now exists for all materials that we want it to apply to. So if I make an update to this, it will update in all materials where it is being used. If I delete my material, metallic material there, and bring in my MF function. This is now a consolidation of everything that's in here. So this could be quite a complicated set of material instructions. And we've applied this, and now we've got a metallic setting. And if I have update this, uh, and of course we made these into parameters, it will affect the uh, the scene. So if I go back go back into my material instances, and we should see now that original, the original parameter that could control the metallic, but also the multiplier that I put in, which affects uh, the amount of the metallic. Now we have the metallic and the multiplier, and this will be accessible to every single material on an instance basis. It's different on every single one, but 
if we wanted to completely modify the material function, for instance, I've <clears throat> I've changed this to a different scale of metallicness. So let's do that, and maybe let's multiply it there. So you see it's creating a random number. Um, that's the material instance changed. If you go back to the material function, and if I change the name of multiplier to attribute, and I save this, you'll see that that will now propagate to anything that is referring to that material function, which includes the material master that this is referring to. And now we see it's become called attribute. So material functions can then be made available in anything. So you could have one material function that does something that's very uh, useful to you that you use all the time. Uh, you could put it into your default project, a template project that you use for all your projects. So you can very quickly construct complex materials out of things that you've learned from other projects. And that is how you control materials.